Hello everyone, this is the tutorial for the Art Squared Technique. Now these are the two samples that you would have seen on my members group. Okay, so you can see I've used different colours in both of those. So it just depends on what colours you use to how it turns out. Now my big tip would be if you're only doing this technique for the first time is not to use too much of a dark color and you will need stays on black ink because we're stamping on glossy cardstock if you try stamping with anything else it's just not going to dry and it will just literally wipe off so all your hard work will be for nothing now my big thing to start with and you'll if you print out the word document this is the template that I've used for most of my cards that I've showed you on the members group so it is always really important to draw yourself up a template so I have have attached that to the second page of your word document so you can print that out and use that one or by all means make up your own template this template measures five and a half inches by four and a quarter which is the full size of the front of your card okay so but it is very important and I'll just show you um, because this was the off the page I think we did it last month off the page um, project of the photo album and I did the front using that um, technique the art squared technique and all how I did this was I just made a template so it measured five inches by eight inches and then I just ruled up all the measurements and then worked on that template and I always keep all my templates so just so you know how I did create that much larger piece to go on and I use several different images from different um, new stamp sets so don't feel you have to just use one stamp set you can use images from all different sorts of stamps that you may have on hand so it's entirely up to you how you do it so to start with we need a piece of glossy cardstock that measures five and a half by four and a quarter inches um, for this time anyway that's what I'm working with so I've just got this little piece of um, non-stick that I use now I'm going to be using or bring in my ink pads I'm going to be using lovely lipstick call me clover and pool party now another thing is I would if I was you when you're doing this I do whenever I'm doing this technique I always cut myself two pieces of glossy cardstock and I sponge up two at the same time I already I've already done one so I'm going to do one so you can see how I do it um, the reason is because it is very easy to make a mistake when you're cutting and then you'll be short a piece and it will be literally impossible for you to reinvent the color schemes that you've used okay so that is another tip and then when we've cut it all out when we've sponged it stamped it cut it all out I always like to use in for my base card in this time I've used lovely lipstick so I would be gluing all my pieces to a piece of lovely lipstick the reason being if you have any like a really fine piece that just isn't meeting up with the other it's it's not going to look as bad if you use the same color base cardstock as you do on your base card so We'll start with this piece. So I just want to make sure that's just 
getting everything ready so there okay so then we need our sponges and you can see that I've cut them up into little pieces so to start with I'm just going to go into my lovely lipstick now this isn't how I would normally those that know me know that I take hours to sponge but with this technique and it's taken me a while to get used to it is that this is all you do on glossy cardstock now we'll just bring in a bit of call me clover so anyone can do this it's not hard at all you just have to not be fussy about um, and you can use as many colors as you like I tend to use I tend to use three three or four so I'm just using three today so I'm just taking the pool party mostly over and it's fine to go over it it's just exactly how however you want it and it did take me a little while to get used to doing it like this because I'm used to sitting here and sponging I'll just move them back a bit give me a bit more room um, I'm used to sitting here sponging for hours but and taking my time and blending my colors in into um, each other very smoothly so it's all looks nice and neat and you wouldn't it wouldn't look messy like this put it that way and then you can always if you go back in and you go over the colors you will also get a lighter colour because you're going over colours on the glossy. Now it is really important that you do use glossy cardstock and I know at the moment this looks like one big mess and as I said it did take me a while to get used to this and not be fussy but when you cut it up you'll see and I know some people um, I've noticed have been doing it the other way around where they've stamped all the images and then cut it into pieces and that's really not how the technique is meant to be and I'll show you why as we go through the video I'll show you why so I wasn't joking when I said that it is such an easy technique so that piece is finished and see I did a piece prior and even though it's not exactly the same that's using the same colors but you can see how different it is okay but that's all good so we'll get rid of that and we'll get rid of the ink pads because we're finished with all that just clean up so just do yourself two of those though just in case you do make a mistake with the cutting so I'm just going to be having I'll try and have it so you can see it so you can see what I do so I've got my template there now first I'm going to start off so I'd like to put a ruler and I would suggest you do it so we're just going to cut this top section first okay so if you look on your word document if you print it out you can see this piece is two and a quarter by half an inch two and a quarter by one inch two inches by one and a half so if you add the one inch and the half that makes 
one and a half inches up and this is one and a half inches up so we want to take we want to get our trimmer and we want to cut the top piece off by one and a half inches okay this is the most challenging part of the process and you just have to take your time so that's one and a half inches and then this is two inches across so we're going to cut that off at two inches and then that piece would you would put that on your template just you're not gluing it you're just sitting it on your template let's bring that down a bit so you can see okay so you're just going to set it so you know in your own mind that that's going to fit in the correct way so then we've got this piece here and it is half an inch and one inches in height so I've just got this little trimmer that I like to use but you can use the big one so I need to cut that at one inch so then you've got your piece that sits there and your piece that sits there then we're going to go down to the next section and both of these are one inch in height so that makes it easy now this is where you can make a mistake and I have done it so if you had it like that and you cut off one an inch off the top you can see that it's not going to fit your template so always make sure just take your piece of cardstock back to your cut back to your template and make sure you're going to be cutting off in the right space so we want to cut a, we want to cut a piece off the top here at one inch and then that is finish with that bring this trimmer over that is three and a quarter inches long so we're going to cut it at three and a quarter inches long and then we're going to put that piece on your template so you know you've done it right and then this piece should be one inch by one inch and that's going to fit on there like that now coming down to the bottom is a bit challenging so make sure you're going to cut it at the right place so that fits there so this is two inches across and three inches high so this time I'm just going to cut go two inches across and cut that down there so I'm going to go two inches and place that on there now in this instance I find it easier to cut this last piece down here first so make sure I'm going to cut it correctly so I'm going to cut a piece off the bottom here so it's only one inch in height so I just need to cut one inch which I'll just do on the trimmer here just make sure you hold that down so it doesn't um, move on you and that's going to go across there now make sure you've got this see how I accidentally had that if I cut that like that it, I would have had an incorrect cut so just make sure I always like to take it back to my template so this next one is just one inch across so I'm going to just cut one inch across on this side and that's why I say to do two sponge two um, 
pieces of glossy cardstock at once because you can always keep the other one for another card and then you've got a backup if you do an incorrect cut which I have done a couple of times so then this will go in there and these are both one inch in height so we just want to cut that off at one inch we're literally cutting it in half but just make sure that you are cutting it correctly because it is one inch by one and a quarter so what a miracle I've cut that correctly but that's why it's really important to use a template like that so now we know that we've got all that ready to go we're just going to put that to the side and I'm not going to stamp every single piece I have stamped pieces so I can show you the gluing process and that but I um, I didn't want you to have to watch me stamp all those pieces so I've got a piece of lovely lipstick and I've just um, stamped a piece of whisper white with this lovely stamp here now I didn't grab the stamp set that I'm using but it's called it's one of the new ones and I'll just grab it very quickly and I absolutely love this stamp set it's absolutely gorgeous and there's just so many techniques that you can do with this one so it would be a really good one to invest on um, it's called Very Vassals is how I pronounce it maybe it's wrong I don't know so okay so we've got our lovely lipstick and that's the beautiful vine and I've just stamped that off off the whisper white a little bit before gluing it inside and that's stamped in early espresso so we'll just set that aside and then I've got my piece of lovely lipstick now this is what I'm going to glue on and I'm just going to grab this so I can just have it on there like that so what I like to do is I like to pull out all my stamps that I'm going to use and I'll just show you a couple because I've already stamped it I'll just show you a couple the right way to stamp so we're going to take this piece which is from the bottom left but we're just going to take this piece and we're going to this is the script image and I do need to grab my stamp apparatus now you can use an acrylic block the reason I have to use a stamp apparatus is I have quite bad arthritis at the moment in my wrists and so my stamp apparatus is my best friend at the moment now you can't use the magnets in this instance either because the reason being is you're going to be covering that whole image with the with the stamp just push that up a bit for you and it's going to be literally impossible to fit a magnet anywhere so what I do is I line it up there's my five centimeters and I know that I've got two squares there and I just put it there because I'll tell you why it will pick up the whole thing and then I won't know where oh look at that it's made me lie <clears throat> usually it just picks it picks the whole card stock up onto here but because I've warned you about it it didn't do it so I'm just going to open the stays on jet black and remember the reason I said you must use stays on is because we're stamping on glossy cardstock if you were not to use stays on it is just going to wipe off 
and it will not dry, not even with a heat tool. So, so I might just redo that seeing it didn't move. It would be a lot quicker if you were to use an acrylic block. See how it's stuck there. So we'll just pick that up carefully not to touch it and put it back on my template so that it can dry. Okay, then I just keep use my chamois and give it a quick wipe. Because it stays on black, I will be really giving these stamps a really good clean afterwards. So I'm just showing you what you can do. And I always line it up at my five there and two notches down because just make sure I'm, I'm stamping on there correctly. And this time I'm going to take this stamp. And I'm going to turn it sideways just for something different. So there's no rules in how you stamp this. And see how that brought that up. But because I know that I had it about there. Okay. Then we're going to grab our stays on black again. So I'm just going to stamp three or four, just so you get the drift of it. So it doesn't, this your stamp image doesn't have to fit in this area, is what I'm trying to get across to you. Okay. So see how we didn't get it all on there? Well, that's, the, that's part of the technique. Now, this little one up here is always a challenge. And just, you need to think of one. It's a, I think it's really important to put a sentiment on it somewhere. So you can just do that any, on any piece. Now I'm going to try and put that piece on there and it's going to stick to it but that's all okay. I know where if I'm lining it up around the five centimeters every time see how it picks up the cardstock but if I line it up at that five centimeters that's about right. So then I'm just going to stamp it up again. So you're getting the drift of it, aren't you? So that's on there. And we might just do, I want to show you the thing also is not to do, this is a not to do thing, is it's best, as you can see, as I'm stamping them, I'm putting them back on here. So I know what I'm stamping because one tip is don't put two, two of the same stamped images close together. So what I mean is seeing I've used this image here, I wouldn't do the image there or the image there. Okay, so I'm just going to grab another one. And I'm going to use, this is, this is a really great way to show you. I'm going to use the really big leaves, but I'm just going to position them wherever I want them. And even though it's a massive... Um, image and that's only a little piece of cardstock that is part of the technique so 
So just carefully take that off. And then you've got your leaves going down like that. So I hope that gives you the ideal. And I could keep going and going, but I want to show you how I glue it as well. Okay, so you would just continue until you've stamped all your images. So we've literally did most of them anyway. But, you know, you would just keep going until you've, you've done all these other images. And you could do like a sentiment. If you did a sentiment or something up here, you could also add a stamp like some sort of stamp on the corner if you wanted to there's no rules so if you put a sentiment say even if you put a little sentiment in that square well then you could put another sentiment down here because the scent they're not next door to each other okay so you would continue on to stamp all your images and then easily clean up your Stamparata straight away when you're using stays on black ink. Just simply rub the stays on cleaner over it. Wipe your chamois over, and you've got a lovely, nice clean. And that is quite easily fixed, too. I must have got a little bit of. I'm very pedantic about keeping my tools in good condition. Because they, they are an investment. Okay. So that's, and I will be using that stays on cleaner to clean up all my, all my stamps. Okay, so now, I'm going to grab, I'm just going to grab this again. And we're going to glue the pieces that I did prior to coming on so I will put normally I would have these all on my template I'm just looking at my template to make sure I've got these positions right. And that. Okay, so now I'm just going to grab my liquid glue, which is the best one to do in this instant because the reason being is you've got a little bit of wiggle room if you don't get that in the corner because you need to get it right up. So I'm just hoping my head's not coming into your focus. So I just like to pick it up and make sure that it is right up. Then I'm going to take, I'm just going to check with my template, which this is correct. So then I'm just going to glue this piece in place. So what I like to do is put it up on its edge and butt it up against that. And I'm just wriggling it up there just to make sure. And I'm just going to grab this quickly before this one dries. see I need to wiggle that a little bit and don't worry if you have a little bit of overhang when you turn this piece of cardstock over 
it's better to have overhang than it is to have and try not to get glue on your hands because it, you can't really remove it from the um, the glossy cardstock okay So then we're just going to glue this piece so I'm just going to turn it on its side because I want to butt it up against that and hopefully it's going to, I'm not pressing down yet So then I'm going to put my little thank you sentiment that I did on the little square. So every one of these you do, you it will turn out differently. And you can see like how rough we did the sponging. But how awesome are those colours? They are just gorgeous. So, and on the members group I did put a link to one of my Pinterest boards that may help you in choosing the colours that, that may go together. But I would just, my big tip is I just wouldn't use really dark colours when you're first starting out, like Night of Navy or something like that. I would, I would just use like some nice pinks and that to start with. And I told you not to do two together and what have I done? I've done two together. But it doesn't matter. I might even turn it around that way. So that should... So it's, what did I do this one? Oh, look at that. I nearly glued... That is what I'm telling you. I nearly glued the wrong piece because I thought that was a bit strange me having two of the same images together because that is one rule that is about the only rule that you don't do and I've just put glue on that piece but that's all good just quickly grab a just got to try hard not to get glue on the glossy accent but that's alright I was able to save it pretty quickly because see looking at these quickly it looks like they're the same size but they're not and so then I would just pop that piece on so it's not a hard card it's it's just knowing a few tips with it And if you do cut it correctly, it will turn out. But I would strongly suggest that you do sponge two pieces of glossy cardstock at the same time with the same colours. And then if you do accidentally... cut them um, incorrectly cut I just need to slide that one down a little bit and then 
and just pop that one in there. It's a bit hard with the script sometimes to see which is upside down and which isn't, especially on these small pieces. So I really hope that you will try this technique because I absolutely love it. And you can use all different stamp images. By no means you have to use the stamp set I have used, but I just absolutely love this stamp set. So that's another different stamp set that I could put up as a, a um, example on the group. So just um, also with your stays on when you're finished, you should put your lid back on that little plastic piece they give you because that will stop it from drying out. And then all I have to do then is just bring across my and that sh is another thing is when you're gluing it on because this piece is going to fit exactly the front of this card so you want to be very precise you want it to be very precise but if it is a little bit of an overhang which sometimes it is you can just trim it off it's that easy. So I'm just putting a fair bit of glue on there because I want to be able to wiggle it. Just make sure I'm doing it the right way. So it's pretty easy to line it up at the top. So we're going right up to that scored line and it should fit pretty much, which it has, should fit if you go right up but you've got to go right up here unless you want to make your template a little bit smaller, that's entirely up to you. And that's the Art Squared technique. So that's the card we did today using that new stamp set. And we used this one, which was Rooted in Nature. And this one here is actually a hostess stamp set that's available in the new catalogue. So there you go. That's These two here I've used the same colour to um, sponge but I put a little bit more balmy blue in this one and then this one was completely different I think this one was this one I used call me clover lovely lovely lipstick and pool party in that one so there that's the technique art squared technique and please share your pro your cards on the group. I'm sure the other ladies would love to see what you've created. Thank you for taking my class.